Whether or not day to day feels this way, civilization has made great social advances over the decades and centuries. Progressive changes in laws, legislation, and attitudes around the world have, in some areas, brought the diversity of race and gender at social levels that approximate Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous line from his 1963 I Have a Dream speech. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. One thought experiment bears this truth. Imagine you're offered the opportunity to enter a time machine and go back to any previous moment in human history. When and where would you choose? The white, cisgender, heterosexual male has his pick of the timeline. This traveler to the past will be welcomed everywhere and every when. If that's not you, then you'd better think hard about the time and place you'd like to arrive. Are you female, a person of color, disabled, queer, or any combination of these? When was it better for you? A thousand years ago? 500? 100? 50 years ago? 10? 5? For me, I'm good with the present. I'd rather not be declined a taxi ride, overlooked for job opportunities, denied a bank loan, or redlined from my choice of housing. With childhood ambitions of being a scientist, I don't want to be someone's servant, nor do I fancy being purchased and owned by another human being who thinks I'm not entirely human. Come to think of it, I'd rather visit the future, as I presume the preternaturally progressive Unitarian minister Theodore Parker would too. As he wrote in 1853, I do not pretend to understand the moral universe. The arc is a long one. My eye reaches but little ways. I cannot calculate the curve and complete the figure by the experience of sight. I can divine it by conscience. And from what I can see, I am sure it bends towards justice. Do we recognize, highlight, and embrace diversity? Or do we aspire to not notice it at all? Imagine if race, gender expression, and ethnicity were as irrelevant to our judgments of people as what brand of toothpaste they used, or whether they prefer waffles over pancakes. My sentiments align with the visiting alien on this one. Consider extraterrestrials so different from us in every way that, to them, all humans are indistinguishable from one another no matter how much we distinguish ourselves. All they see of us are four limbs, a torso, and a head. Sounds insensitive of them, but we're no better. For most animals on Earth, we have no idea at a glance, and probably not even close up, what their gender is, or whether there's some subtle difference between the coloration or plumage on one member of a species relative to another. We silently think that way about urban pigeons, and especially suburban goldfish. Parents surreptitiously swap live ones for the dead ones that they just killed. This typically happens while their kids are away at camp, as they attempt to conceal that they've overfed or never fed Goldie and Bubbles. For most of us, seen one goldfish, seen them all. Our visiting aliens sees us, segregate, stratify, and subjugate others among us based on features they hardly notice. Bearing witness to our divided ways in response to all that should be irrelevant to the content of our character, our space alien would surely phone home and report surefire evidence that there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth.